सो हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू फिन लैडर इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फ्यूचर प्राइजिंग सो विद रिगार्ड्स टू योर एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स इन दिस टॉपिक वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग हाउ टू प्राइज अ फ्यूचर सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद इट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट थाउजेंड रुपीज ऑन फर्स्ट जैन टू थाउजेंड एटीन and 1000 rupees on 1st jan 2019 we have to understand whether and if they're equal or not equal i for a fact don't consider 1000 rupees on 1st january 2018 to be equal to 1000 rupees on 1st january 2019 because there are a number of costs that you have to add so this 1000 rupees would not be equal to this 1000 rupees this is mostly because of the inflation rate so a 1000 rupees in 2018 would be worth 1000 plus x percent in 2019 similarly a future right now will be costlier then the than share thus future will be costlier than a share this is primarily because of the cost of financing so what we mean to say is that a future is equal to a share plus x percent this x percent will be the cost of financing cost of financing which is also called as the risk free rate or the r so let us suppose the price of share is 1000 right now if we add a percentage let's suppose our rate is equal to 6% each year if we go back to the formula of compounding we would remember that compounding formula was principal 1 plus rate by n is to power n into t now coming back to our formula here the principal is 1000 Plus one, rate is zero point zero six divided by n raised to power here n equal to one and one into t is one, thus which is equal to thousand times one plus zero point zero six, which is equal to one zero six zero. Now the investor would say that this six percent of financing is yearly and i for once do not want yearly compounding i would want a frequent compounding thus he can ask for a quarterly compounding thus when we come to quarterly compounding the formula changes slightly 1 plus 0.06 whole divided by there are four quarters and then 4 into 1 which is equal to 1000 times 1 plus 0.015 let me calculate this this will come out to be 10 thus in yearly compounding he was making 1060 and in quarterly compounding he is making 1061 thus a higher profit of 1.36 now moving further he could also ask for monthly compounding now the formula would similarly go like
thus he would be making a profit of 1061.67 thus a tad higher profit than this now in another scenario the investor would neither be happy with yearly compounding nor will he be happy with quarterly compounding and nor with monthly compounding he would ask for continuous compounding now we need to understand how to calculate continuous compounding let me take another pen so now if we try to calculate continuous compounding using this formula we'll have to say that 1000 times 1 plus our rate is 0 0.06 divided by infinite raised to power infinite into 1 will be our continuous compounding formula now those of you who have studied maths know that continuous compounding can also be represented with 1000 e raised to power r t now there is a whole derivation behind this raised to power rt e raised to power rt which will require another video so for those of you who would like to understand the derivation we can upload another video but for the exam perspective you will not be required to understand how this formula came but you will have to memorize this formula so in finance if you would require anything to be compounded you will have to compound it in continuous compounding which could be represented with this formula of 1000 e raised to power rt here 1000 is our principal multiplied by e raised to power rt and the value of e is 2.71828 so you would be required to remember the first four digits after the decimal point which are 2.7182 thus a continuous compounding is being calculated using principal times e raised to power rt now let's take an example of this in our previous example a rate was 6% time was 1 and principal was 1000 if we apply this in our continuous compounding formula it would be e raised to power 0 0.06 times 1 now you will have to calculate it using a calculator in your ncfm exam just a second remember go to the scientific part of the calculator then let's just put in the values so 2.718 2 raised to power 0 0.06 is equal to multiplied by 1000 so the f answer that we get after continuous compounding will be 1061 just a second 0 0.8346 0.8346 this is how we calculate using continuous compounding now let's take another example of continuous compounding our risk free rate now is 4% principal is 500 time let's suppose is 2 years now in this scenario 500 times e raised to power 4.04 multiplied by 2 Thus 500 into e raised to power 0 0.08 again let's go to the calculator just a second So that means 541.64 will be a future value. 541.64.
Thus, this is how we calculate continuous compounding using our continuous compounding formula of P e raised to power RT. This is also denoted by S e raised to power RT, where S is the spot price. Here P was the principal, here S is the spot price, thus P equal to S. Thus, you can remember this formula this way or this way, both of them are correct. This is what we meant by continuous compounding. You'll be getting at least 10 to 15 questions regarding this. Do practice continuous compounding rigorously.